Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, this is Elite Dangerous, and I'm back with a mining guide. Now, unlike missions or combat, you will need a bit of money before you can actually start mining, and that's because you need to equip your ship with suitable equipment. That said, you can mine perfectly well in the Sidewinder, albeit in a somewhat limited capacity. Whilst this video actually focuses on outfitting a Sidewinder, the information here is actually good for any of the other ships as well. Just scale it accordingly. So, for example, go for the larger refinery or the larger cargo racks. The more slots you've got available, the better. And on the bigger ships, anything larger than a Sidewinder, just fill it up with as much cargo as you possibly can. So essentially whatever you would do with a Sidewinder is also true for any other mining ship, albeit with larger modules and better rated modules. So head to the outfitting screen and we can take a look at the equipment you're going to need. And the first thing you're going to need is a mining laser. You can replace one of the pulse lasers. Some people ask is it worth having two mining lasers? My answer to that is usually I only have one, but two do make a difference they cut the mining time down by a reasonable amount but not necessarily always worthwhile now try and go for the best mining laser you can afford as it will cut down the mining time a fair amount so there we go that's one mining laser you're also going to need a bunch of modules for your ship one in particular will be refinery and you're also going to need to ensure you've got your cargo hold so first up let's take a look at the refinery you may wonder where you can uh, place the refinery and what uh, slot you want it in what I've done here is sold the basic discovery scanner it is a place to locate a refinery if you want I'm not actually going to do that I'm going to put something else here but it is a location to place one if you want but do check the rating this is an e-rated class 1 refinery and you can see it's got only one refinery bin the bins actually determine how much how many different types of ore you can refine in one go now this is a, a d-rated one and it's also got a single refinery bin i'm not sure why that is it may be a bug possibly here's a, a c-rated one you've got two bins but you can see the price has drastically increased it's 54,000 for that so let's have a look at what a uh, class 2 refinery looks like just in case you have a class 2 slot available to you a class 2 1 says a class that's a class 1 again with the e rated and we compare that to a class 2 e rated and you can see it actually has an additional bin and that's because the class 2 modules are a little bit bigger than the class 1 modules. Keep in mind if you've got a ship with larger uh, module slots like a class 3 module you can put a class 3 refinery in there and that will be bigger still. And the advantage of using a larger class module is that you can get more bins for a cheaper price. As you can see here this class 2 D-rated module is only 38,000 and it would have cost a lot more than that to get the equivalent on a class 1 refinery. So basically choose where you want to place the module and go for the largest one you can afford. What I'm going to do and what I personally recommend to do if you're happy to do this is to sell your shield. Now a lot of people will probably tell you not to do this but I've been doing it ever since mining become available in the game and I've never had a problem with it yet and what this does is give you an additional class 2 slot allowing you to go for a larger refinery in this case I'll be able to get one with three bins for a reasonable price you probably won't have to do this if you have any other ship other than a sidewinder because they usually have more module space so you'll have an extra area to put one of these in anyway but if you're going to use a sidewinder this is how I usually deal with it. The other two things you're going to need to look at are power distributor and power plant. Power distributor determines how fast 
your shields, weapons or engines recharge. And the power plant determines how much equipment you can have running simultaneously. So for example a mining laser has a fairly high power draw so you need a fairly good power plant to run these but usually you're only running a single mining laser so that means you don't necessarily need an A-rated power plant unlike in combat where you want the best power plant you can actually afford and you can see the uh, power rating over the, the power capacity over on the right there so if you can't afford the best of both of those two things I recommend going for the better power distributor rather than the power best power plant as the best distributor will allow your mining laser to recharge faster and again you can see these stats for these over on the right there in the blue and I'm going to go for the B rated one now keep in mind that you can outfit your ship cheaper than this you don't have to go for all A B or C rated modules you can use D and E's as well and they'll be just as effective at mining although they may take you a bit longer another thing I like to equip a mining ship with and this is usually only for the initial prospecting as it requires a lot of traveling from system to system is a fuel scoop so you can go for the cheapest one here but I'd like to spend a little bit of money on here so it doesn't take too much time to refuel Another alternative to the fuel scoop is to equip a second cargo rack and you actually get a two slot cargo in here quite easily and that will help for carrying space later on. Now the meat and potatoes for mining is all in prospecting and you have to do this initially from the galaxy map where you can try and locate a system that has suitable resources in. Not all systems actually have an area that you can mine in you need to look for either an asteroid belt or a planet that has a ring system in it and look at this one it hasn't got any of those so it's useless for mining in so prospecting or at least the first steps of prospecting are done entirely from the galaxy map and the system maps and you can see here that this one has got both asteroid belts and planets with ring systems in them so now we've found a system that is a potential candidate we need to move on to the next step and that is determining the quality of the resources available in that system and we do this by selecting the resource whilst on the system map and then checking its details on the info panel over to the left there there are two details here that you need to check the first is the quality of the reserves and you can see here that these are common reserves the second piece of information you need to look at is the ring type and here you can see that that is metal rich. It is the combination of these two pieces of information that determines the overall quality of the resources you're going to be able to mine here. Each of these two elements come in multiple states or levels if you prefer that term. For reserves there are five states and the reserves determine the amount of uh, ores you will extract from any asteroid in one go so for example whether you get 1% silver or 75% silver is determined by its reserve condition the state of the reserves from worst to best are depleted reserves low reserves common reserves major reserves and pristine reserves so ideally the ones you want to look for are pristine reserves but these can be fairly rare so major reserves are also pretty good but it's best to try and avoid anything below that. There are four types of ring again in order of worst to best. Number four is ice. These are completely useless because they cannot be mined currently by players. After that you have rocky now these are kind of okay but they will generally, generally contain the lowest quality ores and minerals after that you have metal rich these are quite good you will usually find some silver in there you may if you're really lucky find a little bit of gold 
but the ring type you really want to look for is metallic as these will usually contain the highest valued metals such as silver, gold and palladium. So you've probably worked out by now then that metallic pristine reserves are actually the best rocks and areas currently available in the game but unfortunately that means they are also the hardest to find. So that said don't be frightened of going for any other configuration as well such as uh, metal rich major reserves or metallic major reserves they are also worthwhile mining as well. Now when you're in the first stages of prospecting you're going to find yourself spending a lot of time on the galaxy map hopping from system to system and I've done that myself already and I've found one system here which does have pristine metallic reserves and that's in this asteroid belt here but unfortunately it doesn't extend to the ring systems around the planets although they are all pristine condition they are not all metallic although that one there was metal, metal rich which would probably be worthwhile having a look at also keep in mind that you can only see system maps for systems that you have already visited and explored or for the systems that are already available by default to your ship's computer and there are a good number of these that are available by default so don't be afraid to go to the galaxy map and start looking immediately as soon as you arrive at your chosen destination you're going to want to get to mining as soon as possible but before you can do that if you haven't done so already you're going to need to set a fire group now a fire group is a group of hard points that are set to a particular trigger tree here you can see fire group one I've got both weapons or both hard points set to trigger one and if I press the trigger on there I can cycle it to trigger two or to toggle it off like that if I move over to fire group two I can set the second fire group and I'm going to put my mining laser on trigger two you can switch between your fire groups and the default key to do that is key N and you can see there I've switched to my pulse laser and then switched back to my mining laser and this prevents me from firing both weapons or both hard points at the same time allowing me to keep them completely independent of each other so the easy part and probably the most obvious part is flying up to an asteroid and I suspect most of you have probably given this a try already at some point even if it's just to fly up to the asteroid and just shoot the thing the mining laser doesn't have a particularly good range so you do have to get quite close in order to use it and this is also where you're going to have to be a little careful if you've decided to fly out here without shields because crashing into the asteroid without them would indeed damage your hull and that's probably not something you're going to want to do so when you collect ore it goes into your cargo hold here via the refinery and to extract ore simply shoot the asteroid with your mining laser which in my case was on trigger 2 remember your key that's bound on the five particular fire group but I'm not quite close enough there I was close enough initially but the asteroid spun around as chunks of ore break off you can select them with the target key or target ahead key as I use here and although this is galite a fairly low quality ore it is also 25% which is probably due to the fact we're in pristine reserve belt to collect it open your cargo hatch use the little targeting reticule on the blue square down the bottom to align the ore to the center and fly forward slowly and that will go into your refinery bin and there is the galite at the top just select it and it will go into one of the empty slots if you only have a single empty slot that's the slot it will go into it always goes into the first available slot as you continue to mine and collect the ore it will build up until it reaches 100% and once it does that you will have one tonne of that particular ore which will then be available in your cargo and any remaining ore will still be in your refinery which you can if you want vent as I just did there venting ore actually destroys it, it doesn't put it into space it actually destroys it so once you've done that you can't collect it again However, as you mine, venting will be a necessity. 
you're not going to always be able to collect every single ore you have. In this case I've got two of my three buckets already full. I do have a third one empty but I've got to choose between which of these two ore types I want to collect as I've only got one slot. Now I could vent the whole lot by selecting vent here and that will vent the two types of ore that are actually above the highlighted area here. But I don't want to do that, I want to collect one of them. So I will collect this one, I'll select that, that goes into the available slot and I can then vent the remaining one and that's now been destroyed. Now there could also come a time where I want to free up one of these slots because maybe I've just found some platinum or something like that and I can vent some of this by selecting the up arrow next to it. Just selecting it and pressing on the trigger will vent that ore and that's also been destroyed which has freed up the slot. And as you get larger refineries you will get more slots and therefore venting will become less of an issue. Essentially there are three places you can mine. The first is the asteroid belts around the sun as you saw in the previous section. The second are resource extraction sites and the third and my favourite are the rings themselves and to get into the rings you just fly towards them, make sure you're going slow enough. I usually try and get below a thousand uh, kilometers a second. And when you hit into them, you will be dropped out of warp, where you will find yourself in a completely isolated part of the ring system. Now, unfortunately, sometimes NPCs do spawn here, and they tend to spawn more or less the instant you arrive. However, there are locations that this doesn't happen, so Feel free to hop in and out of the ring systems. The final step of course is selling your collected resources and you can do this at any station that has a commodity market. And this is pretty much the best bit as far as I'm concerned, it's where you get your money. So there's one piece of silver I collected. With a, a, a sidewinder you've got generally four cargo slots. I could have had an additional two instead of having the fuel scoop which would have given me six slots and if I was fortunate enough I could have had six pieces of silver there or indeed six pieces of gold depending on what you're able to find. When you're out there looking for rocks to mine do look for the best asteroids. Quite often you can find gold and platinum in the metallic pristine reserves and more than once I've come across chunks of platinum that are 75% in quality meaning that you basically get a whole bunch of money very very fast you can see me doing this in some of my exploring Elite Dangerous series now there is a working pattern to try and maximize your chance of finding those types of rocks Anything really above 30% when it's gold or platinum is very, very good. And the working pattern I use is to not look beyond any more than six rocks in any one particular area. If you've looked for six rocks and all you've found is rubbish, then hop back into Super Cruise, move along the ring a little bit, and then hop back out of Super Cruise again and begin the process again. Another tip when you're mining is to maximize your available cargo space, and this saves you keeping returning back and forth from the station all the time. You're fairly limited with a sidewinder, although like I pointed out a moment ago, you can always put an additional two slot cargo rack in your bottom slot that your discovery scanners in by default. You do have more options in an Eagle and anything above that generally has a lot more module slots. So there is a lot more options available to you there. Well, I hope that has all been of some use to you. As always, Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. This has been Obsidian Ant, signing off.